Once upon a time, there was a poor widow who lived with her son. Her son Jack did not work because he was a very lazy young man. That was why they almost had no money. Mom, is there anything to eat? I'm hungry. Each passing day, they had become poorer and poorer until they had come to a point where they had to sell their cow, Milk White, because they could no longer feed her. Jack's mother told him to bring the cow to the marketplace and sell it for the best price he could get. Maybe then they could buy some food to eat. On his way to the market, Jack came across a somewhat weird-looking old man. The old man had a look at the cow and turned to Jack and said, Hi, my boy. If you give me this cow, I will give you very valuable things in return. Jack was very happy to hear this. The old man took out five beans from his pocket. Beans? But these are magic beans. Jack, of course, did not believe him at first. But the old man insisted. Look, young man, you seem like a good and bright kid. Take these magic beans. You won't regret it. Trust me. Jack believed the old man and gave him milk white in return for the magic beans. Happy with the exchange he had made, Jack ran home. Ma, look what I've got! Seeing Jack running to her so excited, his mother thought that he had sold the cow for a lot of money. But then when Jack showed her the magic beans, his mum was pretty cross. She threw the magic beans into the garden and sent Jack to his room. You were grounded in your room until I tell you to come out and no dinner for you tonight. In the morning, Jack looked out the window and he could not believe his eyes. From his bedroom window, he could see a stalk growing up really fast. This was neither a tree or a giant flower. This was a magic beanstalk. Jack jumped on the giant beanstalk from his window. Using the leaves and the twisty vines like the rungs of a ladder, he started to climb up the beanstalk. After a while, he found himself in a weird place where everything was much bigger than normal. He saw a path full of flowers and a very big house at the end of it. Jack came to the house and knocked on the door. A lady giant answered. Uh, well, I was going to ask if you had something to eat. Yes, I do. But you must disappear before my husband gets back because he loves the taste of young children and so he eats them up. Jack, of course, was a bit frightened, but also he was very hungry. Just as he was sitting at the table to have a bite, he heard someone talking outside with a deep voice. Fifi fo foes, I smell a child with my nose. Raw or cooked, I don't mind. I can't get enough of those. The woman called out to Jack. Hide in the oven right this moment, my child. Jack hid in the oven at once. The giant went into the kitchen and started to sniff around. I can smell children. What are you talking about, dear? You're probably smelling the meat I've given the cats yesterday. After he had finished his dinner, the giant started to count his gold. Ah. 
After a short while, he was tired from counting the gold, and so he fell asleep. Jack came out of the oven and took a bag of gold. He threw the bag right under his magic beanstalk. Then off he went down holding onto the beanstalk. He found the bag of gold he threw down and ran home right away. When Jack's mother saw the gold, she was very happy. From that day on, there would be no more poverty or hunger for them. But after a few months had passed by, all the gold they had finished. With no other option, Jack climbed up the beanstalk and went to the house of the giants. The giant's wife was somewhat a little suspicious of him this time. Last time you were here, we lost a bag of gold. But still she pitied the young boy and invited him in. Not long after, the giant came home. Fifty fo foes, I smell a child with my nose. Raw or cooked, I don't mind. I can't get enough of those. Hearing the giant's song, Jack jumped into the oven once again. After finishing his dinner, the giant asked his wife to bring his chicken. When his wife brought the chicken, he ordered the chicken to lay an egg. Leaving Jack fully surprised, the chicken laid a golden egg. And when the giant went to his room to rest, Jack came out of the oven and took the chicken and rushed down the beanstalk. Thanks to the golden egg, Jack and his mother were rich once again. But after some time had passed, Jack decided to try his luck once again and started to climb up the magic beanstalk. This time he went into the house without being seen by the wife and hid in a big copper pot. Some time later the giant came home. Fifty fo foes. I smell a child with my nose, raw or cooked. I don't mind, I can't get enough of those. This time the giant's wife decided she wanted Jack caught. If there is a child around here, then it should be in the oven. Of course, Jack had hid somewhere else this time. The giant and his wife were determined to find the child. But although they searched everywhere in the house, they just could not find him. After their dinner, the giant put a golden harp on the table. And so he ordered play. Playing lullabies, the harp put the giant to sleep. At that moment, Jack knew that he wanted this harp more than anything else in the world. In order to do so, he climbed up the sleeping giant's knee, jumped on the table and to the harp. Something really unexpected happened. Help! The harp yelled! Jack jumped down the table with the harp on his back. The giant woke up and started to run after him. Jack started to slide down the beanstalk as fast as he could and the giant followed. When he reached home, Jack called to his mother. Mom, quick, bring me an axe. They both started to cut down the beanstalk. And finally, the beanstalk, and of course the giant, bound down on the ground with a big noise. They were safe from the giant. Oh good, we're safe. They were safe all right, 
but Jack was very regretful of all the things he had done. He almost lost his life because of his greed. He promised his mother that he would never ever steal from anyone again and that he would work really hard from now on. From that day on, Jack and his mother were never poor again. Yes, they did have the golden egg laying chicken to help, but Jack also never stopped working ever again. Farmer Gopi went to his field unhappily that day. Because even though it was summer, his field was still not yielding any crops. Oh, my field has not yielded any crops today either. What am I going to do now? If I can't deliver crops to the kingdom, I'm going to be in trouble. One day, just as Gopi was about to give up digging on his barren fields, his shovel hit a hard object. Huh? What's that? As he continued digging, he realized that it was a pot. What's a pot doing in my field? And it's empty inside. Ugh. Gopi was very unhappy that he had spent so much effort with no reward. He dropped his hoe in the pot and lay under a tree to rest. After a while, when he wanted to take his hoe to return home, he realized that there were 100 more hoes in the pot. What? How can this happen? I only have one hoe. Gopi emptied the pot full of hoe. And this time, put his shovel in it. But what is that? Another 100 shovels immediately appeared in the pot. Or is it this pot? A magic pot? Who would have thought? Gopi was both amazed and thrilled. He brought the pot straight back to his house. He excitedly tried a chicken egg in the pot and left it in the pot. Soon, the pot was overflowing with eggs. <laughs> I can't believe my eyes. Then he put his apple and bread in the pot. The magic pot gave Gopi hundreds of apples and bread. Now I don't have to deal with this barren field. I can sell these multiplied products in the kingdom market. Every day, Gopi took the pot's multiplied goods to the kingdom and tried a new product every day. One day clothes, the next day vegetables, and another day beans. Whatever he put in the magic pot, it multiplied. Other sellers were jealous of his success and complained about Gopi to a soldier of the king. The next day, the soldiers secretly followed Gopi. Gopi took the magic pot that morning and put a chick in the pot to sell at the kingdom market. A little later, hundreds of chicks came out of the pot. The soldier couldn't believe his eyes. With hundreds of chicks running around Gopi's house, one accidentally fell into the pot, producing another hundred chicks. Gopi even had a chick on his head, under his chair, and in his dinner plate. The soldier immediately went and told the king what he had seen. The king ordered that Gopi and his magic pot be brought to him immediately. Gopi went before the king, and the king confiscated the pot from him for the kingdom's treasure. Gopi was very upset. Let me take a closer look at this magic pot that will enrich my wealth. <laughs> the king approached the magic pot and bent down into it. My king, be careful, please. But just then, the king slipped. He could not keep his balance and fell right into the pot. No! The king has fallen into the cauldron! Oh! 
In just a few minutes, 100 more of the king had formed in the hall. The soldiers were confused about who to obey. Kings were fighting each other for the throne, each claiming to be the real king. I am the real king. No, it's me, the real king. No, I am the real king. Shut up. I am the king. When Goopy realized how dangerous the magic pot could be, he sneaked out of the palace during the confusion and took his pot with him. He went straight to a cliff and threw the magic pot off the cliff. The pot disintegrated into pieces and disappeared. From that day on, Gopi's field began to grow crops once again. And Gopi understood that the land became fertile not by magic, but by labor. And he lived in wealth forever. Once upon a time, in a small town lived two siblings, a boy and a girl. The boy's name was Harry, and he was so naughty. And the girl's name was Sally. She was very smart, but also a bit forgetful. Harry and his older sister, Sally, were very poor. They often went to bed with their stomachs empty and were hungry every day. At night, it was hard for them to go to sleep because their stomachs hurt. One day, Sally was so hungry, her stomach would not stop rumbling. Oh, we haven't eaten a bite for days. Sally wanted to take a walk in the park to forget her hunger and left the house. She took her canteen of water with her. After a while, she wanted to drink some water and rest. However, just then, an old woman in shabby clothes appeared before her. The woman slowly walked up to Sally. <coughs> Girl, give me a sip of water. I haven't had a drink of water for days. I'm so thirsty. <coughs> of course, here you go. You can drink as much as you want. The old woman drank the water and turned into a beautiful young fairy in an instant. A fairy! I want to thank you for your help, beautiful girl. Make a wish. My brother Harry and I are very poor and hungry for days. All right. Look on the table as soon as you get home. You will see a magic bowl. A magic bowl? Yes. When you say, cook bowl, cook a hot meal, it will cook for you sweet porridge. When you say, stop bowl, I'm full, it will stop cooking. Now you and your brother will never go hungry. Thank you so much, young fairy. Hey, little girl, don't forget the magic words for the magic bowl. Sally ran back home. Indeed, as the fairy said, there was a bowl on the table. Hmm. Sister, where did this fancy bowl come from? It's not fancy, Harry. It's magical. This is a magic bowl. Oh, okay, but what good is an empty bowl, even if it is magic? Now, be quiet and watch. Cook, bowl. Cook a hot meal. After the magic words, the bowl suddenly got hot and started to cook sweet porridge. But this... How, how did this happen? The bowl is truly magical, so we won't be hungry anymore. Harry and Sally ate not one or two, but ten plates of sweet porridge. And when they were finally done, Sally said the magic words to stop the bowl from making more. Oh, I'm finally full. This porridge is delicious. Oh, I could eat this every day. <laughs> Indeed, Sally and Harry ate sweet porridge for days and never got tired of the taste. One day, before Sally went out, she wanted to tell her brother Harry how to stop the bowl from cooking. Harry! Harry! I have to tell you something very important. Come now. 
Harry ignored his sister's call and didn't come to her. So Sally went to him. But just in that moment, she forgot what she was going to say because she was often forgetful. Uh, what is it? Why are you standing over me? I'm sleeping, can't you see? I was going to say something very important, but... You forgot, huh? Classic Sally, a sister with a fish memory. Don't be so mean, Harry. Anyway, I better go. But once she was outside, Sally remembered what she had to say to her brother. Oh, now I remember. I had to remind him how to stop the magic bowl. Oh, well. Harry won't wake up until I get home anyway. But sure enough, Harry woke up while she was away and got up from his bed and went to the table because he was very hungry. Cook bowl, cook a hot meal. The magic bowl started to heat up immediately. The home smelled of sweet porridge again. Harry had eaten a large plate of sweet porridge and wanted to stop the magic bowl from cooking. I think that's enough for breakfast. Stop, bowl. Don't cook, magic bowl. Um, stop. I'm full. Uh... But the magic bowl didn't stop cooking because those were not correct magic words. Um, dish, pocus, hocus, stop. The magic bowl did not stop. It continued to cook sweet porridge. Oh no, what am I going to do now? This bowl won't stop. Stop, broken bowl, you're making a disaster. No matter what Harry said, the bowl kept cooking sweet porridge. By the time Sally returned home, almost the whole house was full of porridge. My brother probably hasn't woken up yet, so now I'll cook him a delicious porridge. Wah! What is this? When Sally couldn't open the door of the house, she looked through the window, and what did she see? The whole house was sticky and full of porridge, as her brother Harry couldn't stop the bowl from cooking. Help! Help! Oh, this is awful! Harry! Uh, Oh, sister, help me! I'm going to fall in! Stop, bowl! I'm full! After Sally's magic words, the bowl finally stopped cooking porridge. So Harry was saved from drowning in porridge. (laughs) Hey, yeah! (laughs) Thank you, Sally. What are we going to do with all this sweet porridge now? Our house is all porridgey. Sally had a great idea. She immediately went and called her other poor neighbors in the neighborhood. Each of them lined up outside Sally's house. While Harry filled the plates with delicious porridge, Sally handed them out to their hungry and poor neighbors. Ah, hey, thank you so much, Sally. You have fed our hungry stomachs. Yum, so delicious. Harry and Sally were very happy to help poor people like themselves. It felt good to help out their starving neighbors. Then, an old, poor-looking man came to them. Oh, it is true. A magic bowl of porridge. I've been walking for days to find food for my wife and children. I am so tired. Please, give me the magic bowl that I may go home and feed my family. What are we going to do now, Sally? If we give the magic bowl, we'll both starve. Don't think like that, Harry. The man's children are hungry. Children should not go hungry in this world. Take the bowl and take it home to your family. At that moment, the man turned into a beautiful young fairy. Oh, you, you are the fairy who did me a favor. You have made me really happy, Harry and Sally. You fed the poor people living in the town and helped the man whose children were hungry. In return for your favor, you can keep the magic bowl of porridge forever. You deserve it. Really? (laughs) (laughs) Hooray! Every day from then on, Harry and Sally continued to hand out porridge to the poor people of the town. Their generous hearts became as sweet as the porridge they shared. 
as they saw happy children, young and old people with their stomachs full. They also lived a happy and peaceful life. The End